I think temperamentally they they were very very similar in the sense that they were quite determined to get what was uh, due what was their due probably as far as Rhodes is concerned the the old the old adage about a fair days a fair days work for a fair days pay would um, would sum him up and he would do a fair day's work and he expected a fair day's pay. If that fair day's pay didn't come to him, I don't think he had the confidence to do what Barnes did. Barnes would just down tools and say, right, I'm, I'm off home now and I'm, I'm taking my bat. Um, Barnes had, I think, more confidence in his ability than Rhodes did. And Barnes also, because of his experience playing county cricket, club uh, club cricket, uh, league cricket, uh, minor county cricket, Barnes knew that he could go off and get good work anywhere um, because he was that good. I don't think Rhodes was prepared to test Yorkshire out at any point because he wanted to play for Yorkshire. Um, that was very important for him. It was the county of his birth. He was proud of it. Um, uh, and there are very few instances of Rhodes, um, you know, mounting the barricades. Um, there were one or two. There was the final tour of South Africa before the First World War, where uh, the MCC team were asked uh, by the amateurs to go up to um, what was then Rhodesia and play a couple of games there for no extra money. And the professionals just said, no, you know, we, we want to go back. Um, we've got a county season starting in six weeks. And Rhodes was presumed to be the ringleader in that. He was the senior professional on that tour. But Barnes was on that tour as well. So I should think, you know, Barnes, Barnes was um, quite involved with it when well, he'd already down tools for the last test. So Rhodes could, he could stand up, but it it wasn't his natural playing field, really. He was more of a string puller. I think in the Yorkshire team of the 1920s, who were quite notorious for being um, rather an awkward bunch, um, Rhodes comes out quite quietly behind the scenes. But I think I think if Abe Waddington or George McCauley or Roy Kilner had uh, any issues, I think they would have passed them by Wilfred first. Um, uh, yeah, fairness, fairness. He 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 would do his best and expect other people to do their best by him, and that's why the one person that he does come out um, and criticise was uh, Francis Toon, the Yorkshire Secretary. I mean, when Toon died, Wilfred just said, "Well, I know." I thought much of him, so that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> I know that. Sorry, that was when he was when he was asked to congratulate him on his knighthood. I don't like the man, and so I'm not going to say anything. Um, that's a, that's an unusual thing for for Wilfred to have um, expressed such an open sentiment. Um, yeah, as far as the amateur and professional thing, I think I think you absolutely right. Barnes and Rhodes were. It came from a similar school, but Barnes had more confidence and was basically more bullshit 